yesterday I went through this amazing experience with you. It was a collective experience. And then I saw your relationship with the meditators who were the volunteers in this incredible course that we did. And there was something that connected you. Now, I've heard stories about this. I've heard that as Jesus walked in, and they, he spread this love. And we always wondered, how could you just spread love? I saw that yesterday. But I saw tears in their eyes. We could explain that. But I saw tears in your eyes because I saw a two-way relationship. So let's just keep with this idea of a guru and tell me <laughs> what is this two-way? Because I saw you like your like a devotee. You know, you were like them when you were talk when you went to them. It was not just their emotion; it was yours. See, here you are. You are using the word devotee. I don't know whether they're devoted or not. My life is devoted to them, <laughs> okay? Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. My whole life is devoted to every human being on this planet, every creature on this planet. So, a devotion is just a deeper love affair. Mm. When I say a deeper love affair, generally these days at least, people are understanding a love affair as some kind of a transaction of give and take. Devotion is a deeper love affair of just absolutely giving. Whether take is there or not just doesn't matter and it doesn't occur in your mind. So for me, my love affair is just with everything that I set my eyes upon. Whether it's a man, woman, child, animate, inanimate, it doesn't matter. Whatever I set my eyes upon, I'm in a deep embrace with that. So for me to come to tears, I don't even have to look at a human being. If I look at a cloud, I'll come to tears. If I look at a tree, I come to tears. If I close my eyes, I'll come to tears. So tears is not even about love. If you tell me I'm in love with people, I wouldn't feel that's a great thing. I feel you're lowering the whole thing. I'm not in love because love is still a kind of a transaction. This is a certain dimension of inclusiveness. Actually, in my experience, there is nobody else in this planet, nobody else in this existence, it's just me. In my experience, I don't see myself and somebody else, I just see myself. So, this is not even devotion, this is not even love, this is just inclusiveness. And this is not my idea, this is not my philosophy, this is the way existence is. If you do not constipate your consciousness with… by being identified with limited things, like your own body, your own mind, your own culture, your own religion, your own family, your own whatever, if you… your own species for that matter, if you do not constipate your consciousness with that kind of limitations, mm -hmm. the existence is all-inclusive. Well, science can prove it to you today, <laughs> isn't it? The more people see you, even from a distance, there's a sudden outpouring of love, complete outpouring of love. So let's talk about love. <laughs> this is one kind of a love. Is a what happens? Is there something? Is it a release? That could be one thing with the CU and their own stresses and emotional release. On the other hand, is there some kind of energy that you're transmitting to them? Is that energy possible only in a loving uh, relationship, even between you and the people, or between people themselves? What is that energy called love? And then let's relate it to man and woman because that's the love most of us know. Love or hate, whichever you like it, but <laughs> let's talk about love. There is no such thing as uh, an energy that is love. Life is a certain energy. You are a certain life energy. The many parts of this life energy is finding expression as thought, as body, physical action, emotion, and there are other dimensions, of course, energy action. If you can perform only physical activity in your life, the span and the scope of that activity is very limited. Mm -hmm. Because you empower your physical activity with your mental activity, depending upon the keenness and the intensity of your mental activity, your physical activity takes on a different level of... Mm -hmm. as if it moves into a different dimension because the mental activity. If you make a movie, if it's all physical, it's one way. There is a certain intellect involved in it, it's another way. There's a certain emotion involved in it, it's another way, isn't it so? Mm -hmm. So that's so with life also. 
So, these are different levels of intensity. Physical is at one level of intensity, intellectual is another level of intensity, emotion is a different level of intensity. Generally, people are looking down upon emotion as something less than intellect, which is a very wrong thing they're doing. Which I think slowly people are realizing they're talking about emotional intelligence now. Because emotion is capable of being of a higher intensity than intellect in many ways. Intellect has a certain coolness, intellect has a certain penetration, but emotion can just embrace everything. Intellect can know pieces of life, emotion can know the wholeness of life. So this is the reason why spiritual traditions always have made devotion the biggest thing, because a devotee looks like a fool to an intellectual person. But what a devotee knows in terms of life's experience, and what he knows in terms of perception of life in its totality, an intellectual person will never touch that. So a devotee looks like a fool, but the real fool is elsewhere <laughs> So right now what's happening here when people are around me is neither intellect nor emotion nor body. It's another dimension, which is... which is just pure reverberation of energy. If I reverberate in a certain way, some people will roll their eyeballs upward and simply sit there. Some people will cry, some people will laugh, some people feel that they realize so many things being there in that space. This is their expression of it. This is like, if I give you electric connection, somebody makes light out of it, somebody makes sound out of it, somebody makes coolness out of it, somebody makes heat out of it, different gadgets are making different things out of the same electricity. So my thing is just to exude that energy. Somebody makes love out of it, somebody makes alertness out of it, somebody makes awareness out of it, somebody makes meditativeness out of it, that's left to that individual depending upon his level of evolution and his receptivity as to how he is. So am I creating a love energy? There's no such thing as love energy, there's just life energy. There is only life energy. You can... love is just one expression of life. Intellect is another expression of life. Physical action, another expression of life. Awareness, another expression of life. So life can find million forms of expression, but people elegizing one over the other is a huge mistake. All of them are needed. Love without the needed awareness and balance is going to be horribly burdensome, <laughs> isn't it? Mm. So what you're referring to as love is basic, basically the sweetness of your emotion. You sit here and you could feel about love, you could feel love about somebody who is not even here. So it's got nothing to do with anybody. Once a human being becomes more and more aware of his own nature, he understands to experience love, to experience blissfulness, to experience ecstasy, even to experience orgasmic ways of life, you don't need anybody actually. If you just sit here, you can make it happen within yourself. Because after all, it's your body, it's your mind, it's your emotion, it's your chemistry, and you are the one who is creating all the experiences of your life. Because people are not conscious of this, that you are the maker of your life, you are the one who is doing your life the way you want it. Most people still believe that their experiences are being shaped by people and situations around them, but that's not true. Human experiences are one hundred percent self-created, one hundred percent.